Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech, and I hope this the title isn't too clickbait. I was actually really trying not to, but it's hard to title this without like having some sort of clickbait. And that is, we're gonna talk about the ARC 6000 series. And everybody's doing videos and reactions, and this is, I'm doing something I don't think anybody else is doing. So the purpose of this video is to talk a little bit about my thoughts, but also to take all the benchmarks and actually put them in a graph. So you're gonna see all six cards they tested in all the games next to each other. So I think it's gonna be a little bit easier to see. I think it only took about six minutes or so to actually go through all 10 benchmarks, averages, all that fun stuff. Cause I think the purpose is you guys are gonna stop the video and look numbers and maybe listen to what I have to say. So my initial thoughts. Um, I am happy with the fact that they released or they announced a card that's gonna attempt to compete with the 3090. So that's definitely one thing I'm really happy to see. I'm happy to also see that the 6800 XT should, you know, based off of actual like numbers here, and I might grab one of those, I haven't decided yet, it should compete with the 3080. Um, we'll beat it, time will tell. But I also think the 6800 is an interesting uh, card, but I'll kind of give you guys my final thoughts here. Um, do note, um, before I actually go into this, the 6900 XT numbers were actually done with that, um, the, infin the Infinity Cache between the two chips. So between the Ryzen 5000 and the, and the RX 56000 series chips. So do keep that in mind. I actually didn't know that going into this until Crackle and I just pointed out. Thank you very much. I've pointed out. So without further ado, let's take a look at a couple things to remember and then benchmarks. Just a few disclosures. These are AMD's benchmarks. These are not mine. These are not Linus's or Steve's or anybody else's. I'm also eyeballing the video's results because AMD did not physically post the actual performance numbers. AMD did cherry pick the best API that they had available to them. So it could be DirectX 11, 12, Vulkan. We actually do not know that answer. Well, we do know at least for the 6800 XT and 6800, uh, they weren't utilizing the new caching system they have. Uh, but they also cherry picked the game titles for the most part. They looked to mostly be AMD uh, favored. Uh, resolutions 4K, anti aliasing unknown, and the RTX 2070 is missing. I'm going to take a guess and say they probably didn't have any of the tests and verify, but. I think the 2080 results are pretty good to go on. Okay, first things first, Battlefield 5. We have the 6900 XT running 122 FPS versus about 110 on the 3090. Uh, the 6800 XT was 113 versus about 102. And the 6800 swept the RTX 2080 Ti uh, 98 to 80. Pretty, pretty big advantage there. Um, even if this is AMD's benchmarks, even if it were to sway 5% in NVIDIA's favor, it's still going to be most likely an AMD win here. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, uh, the 6900 XT squeaked out a little win against the 3090. The 6800 XT had a pretty uh, sizable win here against the 3080, as did the 6800 versus the 2080 Ti. So I do expect the 6800 series to probably, in this game, also perform at least on par with the competitors. Uh, the 6900 XT, uh, the verdict's still out there because it was very close and these are AMD's benchmarks. Borderlands 3, this is a lot closer. Um, only a three FPS win at the top tier, uh, mid tier of these, I guess, the 600 XT versus the 3080. They were pretty much tied, so this could definitely lean at NVIDIA's favor when um, benchmarks come out from other reviewers but the 6800 i think has a pretty sizable win here i would expect it to cleanly beat the 2080 and the 3070. the vision 2 on ultra um a 6900 xt loss so it might actually lose more when official benchmarks come out as did the 6800 xt against the 3080 and in this case the 6800 versus the 2080 ti or 3070 um, tied so this is definitely going to favor nvidia when official benchmarks do come out doom eternal this is very close on the top in the middle here 150 to 152 138 to 139 uh, again this may favor nvidia when official benchmarks come out but the 6800 did have a pretty good sweep of the RTX 2080 Ti or 3070 in most cases, so I do expect it to win there. Forza Horizon 4, this is pretty, this is actually kind of interesting. The 6900 XT had a pretty big win. It's probably going to beat the 3090 in benchmarks on this test, but the 600 XT only beat it by 8 FPS, which is only about 5%, so that might be really close. 
Uh, but on, on the lower end here, Decisive went with the 6800. Uh, for 80 bucks more, it looks like this is going to perform uh, quite a bit better in this title. Gears of War 5. Pretty decisive win on the high end here. Going to the 6800 XT versus the 3080. They're very close, so NVIDIA may squeak out a win at that tier. Uh, but again, at the, at the lower end, it's a pretty sizable win, so I would expect that to carry over uh, into the 3070 on official benchmarks as well. Resident Evil had a clear decisive win with NVIDIA here, no doubt. So with the exception on the... On the um, 6800 versus 2080 Ti, which may still win when official benchmarks come out. If Resident Evil 3 is your game, it looks like NVIDIA is still going to win here at most price points. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it's a very close. 6900 XT and 3090 both tied at 96. They both tied at 88 at the second level here. 600 XT versus 38 or 3080. Then the 6800 again is being the 2080 by a decent amount here. We're about 8 9%. So again, I would still expect it to win with official reviewers. Lastly, we have Wolfenstein Youngblood. This is also on the highest settings as are the rest of them. Uh, basically, this is definitely favoring uh, NVIDIA here. You know, AMD did lose by 5 FPS, 3 FPS, and only a 1 FPS win for AMD. So I expect this to probably increase a little more whenever official reviews do come out. This is the average performance. So again, if we take my 5% delta, meaning I think that AMD's estimates 5% higher than what we're gonna see on launch day. That puts the AMD card a little bit behind on the really high end. So probably, you know, around that 112, the 113, or, or NVIDIA might get a boost, right? So right now it's like 2%, 2.5% ahead here. Uh, okay, we'll say it's actually 3%. It's 3% ahead here, so I would expect around 2% behind. The 6800 XT versus the 3080, it's only about one and a third percent ahead. So I would expect it to be three to maybe four percent behind. And then on the lower tier, when we have the 6800 versus the 2080 Ti, or maybe like the 3070, uh, we were pretty decisive with about 13 percent here. So I would still expect AMD to be about nine percent ahead here. And this is what the actual games look like um, in reverse order, essentially, with all the cards up against uh, each other here. So you can see kind of where the averages came from and this kind of gives you a, like a 30,000 foot overview but overall I, I think that these performance tests granted they are AMD this is early it's not official they look to be pretty promising especially since they showed some NVIDIA wins which is not really typical um, in, in historically it's not I think recently we're starting to see that more and more I think it gives more credibility when you show that you know there are some titles you're going to show that you're not doing the best in a lot of graphs more than I probably ever do I think there was 12 as I said in the video I'm happy that we're having competition again right so previously AMD struggled to hit anything other than upper mid tier, right? So the 5700 XT was a $450 card, I think, at launch. And that performed well, but like NVIDIA had the TI, the 2080 TI, the 1080 TI, and AMD seemed to kind of miss the mark. They could compete with like the 1080, they really couldn't compete with the 2080, and it made it kind of frustrating because right now with Intel and AMD, you can make a case for either processor, I mean, pending Ryzen 5000 views, right? If that's really anywhere near what AMD's claiming, then to be honest, there may not be a case for Intel, to be honest, but time will tell there. But AMD used to be super competitive. In fact, they used to be better in many cases up till probably, I think the RX series was pretty good, like the 480. The only problem is they didn't make a high-end card. They had like, you know, the R9, Fury, and Fury X were okay, but it seemed like they were kind of the kings in the HD 7000 series, and they really gave it the, to on uh, NVIDIA. But, you know, I'm looking at these benchmarks, and people are going to say, well, wait for reviewers, and I tend to agree, but I'm going to interject something else. I don't think outside of just a couple of disclosures that these are probably cherry-picked, 
Um, although some, they did show benchmarks where they're not as powerful as the competition. So that's pretty bold. And AMD has been doing that. I think AMD is still going to do best case scenario. Like they even said, like we're using the best API across the board. But realistically, I, chun, I tend to stick with one API at any given time. So like DX12 or DX11 or well, I don't like to switch from game to game. So I usually try to dial it in there. So I don't like that, but they're also pretty transparent. So they said they did that for both. So I would go to say that I would be surprised if the performance numbers were more than 5% swinging. So AMD looks to be anywhere from 2 to 3% ahead. I'd be at the 6900 XT using AMD chip with Infinity Fabric. So I don't know how that performance is really going to look. But 2 to 3% ahead, I'm going to expect AMD to fall somewhere between there and 5% and 5 lower. So I think they're competing. And that makes me really happy because AMD has been always known to have good value, but maybe not the performance as of recent. Now I think they're finally going to have the performance and their marketing team and PR team can work with the pricing to get the best value you can. So I'm pretty excited for this launch. I haven't decided if I'm buying anything yet. Uh, really, it's all about the capital. Um, and that's a little bit of investment and getting my hands on these chips and cards might be a little tough, but I'll try. Um, I do have uh, some videos coming up uh, that I'm going to start working on here soon. I'm going to be doing a, another computer build and some things with my wife's computer and stuff. So stay tuned. Uh, but if you like the video, hit the like button, dislike and dislike button, leave a comment and get subscribed. Maybe I'll put links with generic like Ryzen 5000 and RX 6000 links in the description below. Maybe. I don't know. Because they're not up yet, so you're not going to be able to find them, but maybe for the future I might. But if you do click on that and buy anything during the session, I do get a small kickback. So anyway, I hope this is informative. Um, as always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech, and I'll see you all later on down the road.